Welcome to 4.3.2 Wind Power. This lecture is part of lecture number four in the seven part series on perspectives on energy and environment in the course Principles and Methodologies for Sustainable Design. And here we're looking at wind power or energy from flows, which I prefer to use rather than renewable energy, which I think that is a more, I think energy from flows is a more accurate term. As we get into this, let's start with the facts units, megawatts. Units of power, megawatt hours, percentage efficiency very low compared to fossil fuels, and also very low compared to the amount of land needed to generate the electricity. And that might explain why profits might be very low. Externalities, though, negative externalities are very low. We'll get into that. Um, and the reserves come as, in, as the technology for wind turbines continues to improve and new materials are developed. Uh, needs a lot of space to work, which we covered. So given all that, we still see a dramatic rise in wind power globally. So, so not only maybe it's profitable, but also has some desirable characteristics for the future of the world. Um, and if we look at energy in general, as terms of total energy supply available on Earth, um, wind actually serves as a very good substitute for oil in, this, in the fact that it's non-polluting or very low polluting and provides a, a, just an excellent opportunity for future generations. But in the U.S. and maybe some other countries that have a strong capitalist economy, right now incentives are needed to encourage investors to invest in this technology and build, build the wind farms, and yet it's happening, which is really makes me very optimistic about the future. Some of the experiential aspects of wind we're going to look at, uh, again, the convenience and comfort brought to millions of people all around the world through this energy source, pretty powerful and pretty important. And sensory impacts vary depending on location. So again, as we see over and over again, local people are the ones that get impacted directly by these energy installations. So if you don't live near wind power, you don't see the turbines, you don't care that much. Locals uh, are none too happy about it. Um, some people object to the wind farms based on aesthetics and how it changes the view of the natural landscape. And you could say that the views of the natural landscape are part of the commons. So just like when we talk about hydro, change the views to nature, literally, here again we're talking about a change in those views. Noise is an, out, is, is an, is an actual real externality, a negative externality. Some people claim there's something called low frequency noise syndrome. Not sure if that's real or not. I'm still re re um, researching that. Uh, but the turbines are quite loud. Generally, they're out in the middle of nowhere, relatively speaking, spoken by a true city person. Um, from the system's point of view, the systems are decentralized, meaning that they're spread out all over the place. Um, however, if they currently exist, they have to connect to a power grid and feed into the grid. However, the potential exists for the future to have a totally decentralized um, energy source. Now, if you're looking at wind at the scale of a building and you have a set of batteries, you actually could literally have a decentralized or distributed energy system that is not tied to the grid. Some of the other factors are the closed loop system, pretty close to a closed loop system. We'll talk about some of the open parts. Ecosystems uh, impacts are pretty minor, although there is research that's showing that birds and bats are negatively impacted by this, and that does play a role in the local ecology. And the other problem with wind power is the system is not available 24-7, meaning that um, obviously when the wind is not blowing you're not generating electricity. Um, so the sense of flow as we use that word is really a little bit mis a little bit off because the flows are not continuous. Um, obviously the systems can only work in locations where winds are high and they are far away from populated areas. Um, we do lose power transmission over the line so as we generate electricity and we send it to the grid we're losing energy from the distance that we have to travel. Um, because storage technology is still not there yet, the energy that's generated by wind power needs to be used as it's being generated, which is oftentimes at night. And um, it's not here on the slides, but a lot of the major electric electricity companies are moving to smart meters where you'll get an incentive to run your utilities like or your appliances like washer, dryer, etc. at night or charging your car at night so that you get, get the benefit of nighttime power. Um, Wind, lo wind production is largely unpredictable. As such, flexible backup generation, usually gas or hydro, is required to be kept on alert in order to keep the total charge coming into the electricity grid stable. Um, so wind, if you would like to think of it as a closed loop system, you really can't because it requires typically um, natural gas generated electricity to power the total 
um, energy system and therefore I would still consider that an open loop system with still some emissions into the um, larger global ecosystem to the commons. Uh, but the system itself is relatively elegant if you think about it. Number one, we have rotating generator, converts wind energy. Uh, let me just see what this is. Okay. Um, rotating generator converts, converts wind energy to electricity. Again, a turbine. Transformer increases voltage transmission to substation. Substation increases voltage for transmission over long distances. And number four is transmission to grid. However, if you look over in the lower right of your screen, number three, uh, when wind is not blowing, additional energy provided by other fuel types. So the clean, the elegance of the system doesn't really show up in this diagram. And so, it, so I had to do a little bit of editing there to present a more holistic and fair picture of the technology. Still pretty awesome though, if you think about it. Um, from a culture and society point of view, the energy source could be considered integral or of the 21st century, even though it's been around for a little longer than that. Again, societal benefits from any large-scale energy production are going to be huge. In this particular case, not only is it benefiting the current generations, but also benefiting future generations. And that's where we started getting into what we call clean energy or sustainable energy sources. Societal costs are actually very low. Local populations are impacted visually, but not physically in any way where they can't continue to have a quality of life that they had except for views. Um, it does take up a lot of space. That space can be double used for grazing and farming. Um, so, so minimum impact, minimum negative societal cost, lots of upside on this one. And here's a little cartoon. If you can't see it, I'll just read it to you. It says, I'm for all for green energy, but those turbines creep me out. They remind me of the War of the Worlds or the tripod uh, books. They are unnerving. I can't shake the feeling that they might just uh, come alive. Oh no, it's coming this way. And at the end it says here, Al Gore, you've doomed us all. And the reason I put this in culture and society and not uh, visual or sensory is the mention of the word Al Gore associates wind power with um, sustainability and so-called progressive liberal values, which in America can be very controversial and not universally accepted. So I think America might be an island in the world, though, of politics, where I think wind energy, and as I do more research on this, wind energy is much more common and less controversial. So yes, a couple American eagles have died um, through the result of interacting with these wind turbines. And, and so the, I found this on the internet, the idea of death by renewables. And we're talking about very isolated cases of eagles dying, although we are looking at widespread death of bats and small birds. The research is still being generated, but this could ultimately become a pretty significant ne negative externality of wind energy and needs to be taken very seriously. Some examples of how this might relate to architecture. This is the Bahrain World Trade Center. It was recently built. And you see there between the two towers are three giant wind turbines, which is a pretty, pretty cool idea. Um, so it's integrated wind power works best in tall buildings because of the increase in wind speed. So obviously, when you put wind on low buildings, eh, you're not going to get a lot of energy. Um, so this is an interesting case study. Even with all of that engineering, the, the turbines only generate 11 to 15 percent of the building's total energy needs. Um, 1,100 to 1,300 megawatt hours per year. Still a lot of energy. This is a really big building. And so if, even if you thought about 15 percent of fossil fuels being replaced by the building itself and its basic functioning inherent in the design, it's pretty radical and pretty profound as we think about this technology and the concept of reserves and we know that wind power will get more and more efficient as we go forward. Um, and this again, this is an example of some vertical wind turbines located on low level buildings with limited results. So as a summary, um, wind power creates comfort and convenience for millions of people so we can sit in our apartments very comfortable with heating and cooling and TV and all of the great things, refrigeration, refrigeration, all of those great things that we come to love. And there are some sensory impacts, visual and sound, that need to be accounted for in the overall, in the overall view of this system. Units are actually um, megawatts and megawatt hours. That's a mistake. Profits are low, externalities very low, and reserves are going to require new technology improvements, which, trust me, um, in doing the research, it, there's a lot of research being developed right now to improve wind power. Worldview integral, current, current technology with our worldview, societal benefits very high, societal costs are very low. So um, 
you might want to say this could be a sustainable energy source. Um, although we should admit that the wind systems actually rely on greenhouse gas like um, natural gas to balance and or complete the total energy delivery into the grid. Um, the systems are decentralized but still must um, go back into a power grid, so not completely decentralized or distributed. Uh, relatively low infrastructure needs compared to fossil fuels and others. Um, and the loop factor is almost closed, getting closer, getting to a more pure state of energy. Pretty exciting actually. And ecosystem impacts, I'm going to say minimum for now until I do more research to understand what the impact is of dead birds and bats. Unfortunately, the system has very poor 24-7 availability, which makes, it, makes some of the societal costs a little bit higher because we have to burn natural gas. That natural gas can come from fracking, so the controversy continues in the U.S. Um, but wind power is a preferable option to fossil fuels, but does require fossil fuel backup. So what we're seeing in the U.S. at least is we're seeing combined wind natural gas uh, energy plants that work together to create a continuous charge of energy into the antiquated electricity grids of the U.S. that can't handle wind, for example, very well. So, so the ethical question that we saw earlier on fracking and, and fossil fuels in general now comes into play when we discuss wind. And if we're looking again at a, at a gradation of lessers of evils, if I have to look at wind with some gas um, power backup, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this technology, which also means that I have to think about fracking and whether or not I'm against or for fracking. And hmm, I have to really think about that because in the US, fracking is locally generated electricity. So it has a low, lower total carbon output um, compared to imported gas, very complex. But we're gonna go ahead and move on and get into our next renewable energy, thank you.